You still owe me money. I don't owe you money. You always say that. I don't owe you money. Chip in buck, man. You, you, you work on, I give you a job. You did, yeah. The job yeah. is here for you. What do I owe you, like 40 bucks? What do I owe you? What do I owe you money for? Sixteen dollars for the phone bill. What the f is he talking about? I was talking about gravy. It brings up 16 bucks from 20 years ago. It's supper time. I'm gonna show you how to make the meat of the world. Perfect, roasted chicken. Every single person roasts a chicken differently. I roast a chicken differently than you. I roast a chicken differently than you. I roast a chicken differently than you. There's not even a camera over there. Did you notice that? I think that the world needs to know how to make a perfect roasted chicken. We're gonna make sweet potato. The perfect Brussels sprout. Does everyone around with Brussels sprouts, don't they? No more, my friends. We'll be making biscuits, because there's nothing better than eating roasted chicken and having a buttery, crispy biscuit to chew on. Oh. And I'm gonna show you how to make a chicken stock. I'm gonna be taking that chicken stock and making a very beautiful, dark chicken gravy. This is a small dog meal. The chicken that I'm gonna make today is perfect. Put salt on it, put it in the oven. This is the easiest, most efficient, most delicious chicken out there. We're here at Gasparro's to talk about chicken with my man Nick Gasparro because he knows everything about chicken. When you buy a chicken, you need to buy the best chicken that you can. Go to a local butcher shop and buy good chicken. Let's go talk to Nick, come on. Nick. Yes, sir. Chicken. Yes, sir. What are some of the secrets, maybe, to buying chicken that people don't really understand? Well, the big difference between our chicken, as you can see, it's it's completely air chilled. So yeah. if I throw a, a chicken at your head, yeah. you're not gonna get even a little bit of water on no. your face. It's what chicken is disgusting? Disgusting. What, what this is, this is a naturally raised chicken. If you go to a store, a supermarket, and you buy a chicken, you'll see it's not that color, yeah. and it's full of water. Like, if you look yeah. at the bottom of the of uh, Yeah, of the, the diaper, chicken. the, the yeah. chicken diaper. You'll see water all over the place. Right. This this is, you're buying only chicken. And the taste is phenomenal. It's a, it's a whole it different like a taste. Chicken. Yeah, a this yard a, bird. Yeah. The thing too that I think is funny when people are always eating chicken that like even at the joints, if there's just a touch of blood yeah, or like they, a touch of like redness around a chicken bone, they're gonna die. This this chicken though, when after it's cooked, you'll see a little bit more of that because right. the water's not going through the. It hasn't washed up. Exactly. Flavor. That's right. So these birds, they roast a lot faster. Yeah. When chicken has water in it, 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 it takes That's longer. That's steam. Yeah. When you tell a person to put it in the oven for yeah. 45 minutes, they yeah. don't believe you. 45 minutes. Yeah. It, no, chickens don't take long. It's done. It doesn't take three f***ing hours to roast exactly. a chicken. Exactly. See, this is why you want to go to your butcher. You want to make sure that you're getting that free run, natural raised chicken. Look at that. Look at this beautiful chicken. Dry. Look at that. It's dry. It smells like nothing. A chicken should smell like nothing. Look, Manny, it's a football. Don't throw it in my face. Nothing. No, no, no. No, no water. I'm trying oh, to show you. You're shaking a no chicken water, at me. No water, man. I you are going to throw it no. in my face. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Nick. I wouldn't throw it in your face. Look at that. I love that. Look at that chicken. It's beautiful. OK, is this my chicken? Yeah, it's your okay, chicken. OK, I'm going to go roast it. Go wrap it up. Oh, my god. So first things first, I need to make chicken stock. I want to make chicken gravy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut and butcher up this chicken. If you want to, you can make a chicken stock with just bones. You'll get a really good chicken stock. But if you were to take a whole chicken, it's just that much more flavor. There's the skin, there's the meat, the bones themselves. Like every, It's just everything. There's a little bit of a plate there. Just cut through that. Open this chicken up. So I'm just gonna cut this up into little pieces, take the wings off. So now we have a lot of chicken. So all I'm gonna do is brown up all of this chicken and I'm gonna make a dark chicken stock today. So put in enough canola oil to completely cover the bottom of your Dutch oven. To make a dark chicken stock versus a blonde chicken stock, 
All you have to do is roast the bones, pan sear the bones, the meat, pan sear some vegetables if you want. When I'm making gravy, I like a dark stock, so I'm gonna brown the meat. Then we're just gonna add our chicken, piece by piece. We're gonna brown this up. Woo! So this is exactly what you're looking for. Nice, dark, golden brown chicken. I need to add some vegetables to this. So I'm gonna take carrots and brown them up. I'm not gonna skin them, I'm not gonna do anything. Two stalks of celery. I'm gonna take an onion and cut that in half. We're gonna take a leek. I'm gonna cut that in half, and then I'm gonna cut that in half. So this is exactly what we're looking for on the vegetables. Just take those out of the pan. We're gonna brown up the onion and the leeks, put them face down, and then we are on our way. There we go, there's our onions, nice and caramelized. Get a bowl. Now we got all this canola oil. We don't want this. So get rid of it. But all the stuff on the bottom of that pan is real good. We're gonna deglaze this pan. You take all that fun, all that good stuff. Now look at this. This is the thing that I love instantly. This is just from deglazing. Look at the color of that chicken stock. And that's what I'm talking about. That is how you make brown chicken stock. This is just me layering it up. Add all the chicken to the pot. This is a really intense, really amazing chicken stock. This is how you make it, man. This is the good stuff right here. Now we're just gonna fill up our pot. And with our stock, I like to fill it right up to the top. But look at that color already. Now we're gonna take a tomato, adding like a Roma tomato to a chicken stock just gives it depth. It gives it flavor, gives it a little acidity, a little sweetness. Two bay leaf. Fresh bay leaf, put them in there. We're gonna take a little bit of time, nestle that in there. We're gonna let this simmer for about three hours minimum. I want a beautiful dark chicken stock to make a really rich gravy. Up next, why do we wanna with this chicken so much? Everyone has a stupid little trick. Put butter under the skin. I like to open my chicken up. Let that shit breathe. Now, we're gonna cook this chicken and it will be a perfect roasted chicken. Every single person roasts the chicken a different way. Everyone has a stupid little trick. Put butter under the skin. Do I put a lot of seasoning? My wife, Trisha, she has this Italian seasoning because she's Italian. It's like uh, paprika and like oregano. She always puts that on her chicken. Why do we want to with this chicken so much? Putting a lot of stuff inside of the chicken takes away from the cooking. So if I was to take stuffing and fill that cavity full of bread, it just cooks differently. I like to open my chicken up and just let it be. Trussing a chicken, tying its legs, it's all nice. All of a sudden, all these creases, not crispy skin. Most of the time when you buy a chicken, it's even trussed, like the, there's a little elastic around the legs. Just cut that off, let it breathe, man. Let that shit breathe. So as it hangs, all of a sudden, crispy skin here, crispy skin here. Everything is kind of like more open. And the air, the hot air is going through the cavity. I think this is how you get a perfect roasted chicken. Now the only thing that I am gonna literally add to this is salt. I want it to be as crispy as possible and as natural as possible. This is gonna go in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 45 minutes to an hour, or until the internal temperature hits 140 degrees Fahrenheit. See you later. Brussels sprouts! Who hates Brussels sprouts? Everyone? Why do people hate Brussels sprouts? It's one of my all-time favorite vegetables. This is the way that my mom used to make them. She always used to douse them in vinegar and butter and salt, and you eat them, they're so good. All you gotta do is make sure you, you trim a little bit of the core and then take off any of the extra outside big waxy leaves. And then you just make a little cross hatch into the core like that. My mom always used to do that because the outside cooks a lot faster than the inside the core. So I think my mom used to score the core of the Brussels sprout so it cooks evenly. All you need for Brussels sprouts there's a pot of boiling water. You know, you wanna make sure that your water's salty. 
and we are gonna add our Brussels sprouts. And these Brussels sprouts are gonna take a minute, minute and a half. They don't actually take that long of time. As the Brussels sprouts boil in the back, I am just gonna take two tablespoons of butter and add them to a pan. And we're gonna cook this, melt this up. Now, see those? Bright green, beautiful. We're just gonna add them with our butter. All we're gonna do is push them around. Oh. We're just gonna add like a tablespoon, a little bit of vinegar to our butter. And then we just add our beautiful Brussels sprouts. Oh, mama. Look at that. This is what a Brussels sprout should be. Oh, yeah, that's good. Just like mama used to make them. Oh, yeah. Hot. Right. Woo. These are sweet potatoes. I think everyone knows how to make mashed potatoes or does mashed potatoes, and I think sweet potato is an amazing vegetable, and it's so easy. There's no mess. I learned this from Trishy. She just had like a kind of a quick and easy way of making sweet potatoes. Throw them in the oven, pull it out, peel it, take it out, brown some butter, sea salt, and you got a, a beautiful sweet starch. I am just gonna roast whole. I'm not gonna puncture any holes in them. I'm not gonna do anything to these. If I punctured it, it would just like puncture the sweet potato meat itself. I just want that to be nice and whole and it just like steams and then it puffs and pushes that skin away from it. So all you gotta do is make an incision, open up that skin of the sweet potato and you're left with just like this beautiful orangey red ruby sweet potato. Look, see the thing about TV, I don't even have a chicken in here anymore. And that's okay, because I need room for my sweet potato. But if you guys are cooking at home, you guys gotta figure out your own schedules. When's the, when's the sweet potato gonna get cooked? When's the chicken gonna get cooked? And that's okay. But on TV World, on it's supper time, I'm just gonna put our sweet potatoes right in the oven, cook them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour, hour and a half. Coming up, this psychopath right here loves buttermilk biscuits. I don't even know what's going on anymore. This got out of whack. Oh my God, why do I love biscuits? Warm chicken gravy, fresh baked, buttery, airy, fluffy biscuits. Classic duo. You take two cups, all purpose flour, a tablespoon of salt, a big old tablespoon of sugar, a big tablespoon of baking powder. I like to mix all my dry here. We're gonna take a quarter pound of cold butter. We're gonna cube this up. We're gonna add this to our dry mixture. You wanna use cold butter because if you used warm butter or even room temperature butter, it would just melt. And when we cook our biscuits, that cold butter is still cold and all of a sudden, it melts and it expands. The baking powder, the salt, the sugar, and the flour expand. That's how you get nice, beautiful biscuits. When I was a kid, my mom would always make biscuits. And we, me and my brothers used to think we were like Wolverine. These were like our Wolverine spikes and we would fight each other with this. And we would punch each other in the face with these. Me and my brothers were kind of psychos, but we're good now. So we're just gonna add a little bit of buttermilk at a time here. We got, you know, three quarters of a cup. Why is buttermilk great for biscuits? It just adds to the flakiness and it's lighter than milk. You got a little acidic, you still got that creaminess, and it just pfft, makes that, it's a buttermilk biscuit. It's almost like biscuits are always like just on the verge of falling apart, you know? It's a really kind of crazy thing, this whole biscuit making. It's like you almost want like a crumbly, floury, weird dough. We've added all of our buttermilk, and now we got our dough, and you don't want to work this too much, okay? If you were to take a biscuit and like really mash it and like put it, you get flat biscuits. The less you do, the more you get out of it. Now I'm gonna pat this out and you can roll this out a little bit into like a giant rectangle. Now I'm gonna cut this into three. Boom. Now we're gonna layer this up. And those spaces in between them are gonna crack and break and make and it's just like it puffs up and you get a crispy, crunchy, airy, fluffy biscuit. Here we go, you got your little biscuit cutter. That's gonna allow 
our biscuits to come out and be real nice. Oh yeah. Look at that, all of our biscuits. These were so cool as a kid, I just, I don't know. What's this called? This is called a weapon. This is a Skyline Pastry Blender. I, I call it, it a says pastry. it right on the handle. This is called a blender. I always call it a pastry cutter. That's what I call it. I call it a blender. This is a pastry cutter. That's a cookie cutter or a circle cutter. Okay, but it, let's okay, let's do something. When I Google image pastry cutter, that that exact skyline. What do you? Yeah, but see, that's the thing. When it comes up, deluxe pastry blender. Blenders, these are blenders. Okay, but if I was like in a kitchen and I was like, hey, pass me that pastry cutter, someone would pass me that. Nobody would pass you this. I don't even know what's going on anymore. This got out of whack. Now we're gonna do an egg wash. We're gonna take a pastry brush. We're gonna just paint just enough to coat it. Nice and golden brown. Sea salt, love a salty biscuit. Now put these in an oven. Once again, the sweet potato. Where's the sweet potatoes? How the f do TV shows even get made? I don't know. Biscuits are in 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to take about 15 minutes. Oven light on. Look at those biscuits. Yay! Oh my God! We got the chicken! TV shows. You put something in here. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Look at this. Look at this perfect roasted chicken. Golden brown. Crispy. Everywhere. Beautiful. I didn't do anything except put it into an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. Does your chicken sound like that? We want to let this rest for at least 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Supper time. Next! Guys, we have cooked so many things today. Look at this. Oh, mama. Oh my God. Look at this meal. Our chicken is resting. Our Brussels sprouts are turning yellower by the second. Okay, we're making gravy. A lot of people can't make good gravy, man. Go to other people's houses and they got shit gravy, man. They got like watery gravy or like store-bought powdered gravy. You gotta have game. We have our dark chicken stock here. We let this stock simmer for about three hours minimum. We have a pot here. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter. As we melt down this butter, we're gonna make a roux. I want a nice, thick, velvety, beautiful gravy. We're gonna add Two tablespoons of flour, two are melted, two tablespoons of butter. You want to whisk it because you don't want any lumps. And you have to stir continuously because I don't want to burn the flour. I don't want to let the flour get clumpy and lumpy. So we're going to cook this until golden brown. And that takes a few minutes. Now we're just going to add this beautiful, dark, deep flavored chicken stock to our roux. And I'm just passing it through a strainer because there's so many little blips and blops in there. You don't want that. Bring this up to a boil. I think this is perfect consistency. I don't like super thick gravy with my chicken anyways. I just want it to be thick enough. I'm gonna add a little more salt. Now I'm gonna take a lot of pepper. You know, I love a lot of pepper in my chicken gravy. Now look at that. Oh my God. Oh. Big dog out here drinking a bowl of gravy. Oh, the Brussels sprouts, the roasted chicken. This gravy is so good. I need my biscuits, guys. The biscuits are so important. Oh my God, smell that. I can smell the butter. I can smell the buttermilk. Look at these. These are hot. Ow. And look at this. Oh. 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 Just beautiful baked biscuits with the dark roasted chicken gravy. It's unstoppable. Now, we gotta finish these sweet potatoes. 
And for that, I'm gonna make some quick brown butter. Whoa, easy now. That pan was hot and that's okay. Just move it around, put it back on the heat. You thought I was gonna burn that butter, didn't you? Sweet potatoes, perfectly cooked in an oven. So, ah. Brown the sweet potatoes. As we're browning our butter, we're just gonna cut the skin and look at this. Oh, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna run my knife and cut into them. And these sweet potatoes, you don't gotta mash them. You ain't gotta do nothing. These sweet potatoes are good. Everyone takes one whole sweet potato. And now you got your brown butter. We're just gonna drown these little sweet potatoes in some brown butter. Oh, mama. Just a little salt on top and a little fresh cracked pepper. Look at this meal. This gravy is my gravy. That's my gravy. These are my mom's Brussels sprouts. The way that I cook that chicken is the way that I cook, that's my Maddie chicken. That's Maddie's roasted chicken. Beautiful baked biscuits. And these are the way that my wife, she makes her beautiful whole roasted sweet potatoes and brown butter, some salt and fresh pepper. The simplicity of this stuff will warm the home. It is something that will bring us together. Oh, get a piece of the check here. Oh. Ryan, come here. Taste the gravy. Don't, what are you doing? It's good. Very nice. Okay. Master Rang approves! This is one hell of a meal. We're making roasted chicken. We're making roasted chicken. Have I ever said like one thing that's real on this show? No. Do I even have brothers? I do. What happens if the aliens come and they come with those big spaceships and they just start lasering it? They, if somebody shows up on planet Earth with lasers, we're all obviously. So make sure you have chicken stock in your fridge, okay? At all times.